Hello and a very, very warm welcome. It's Noel Troy from the Hermes Noel and the Fourth Way channel. And I would like to share something with you from uh, a stupendous work by a French mystical poet who was part of the, of the Gurdjieff movement uh, and his name is René Damol. And he's not particularly well known outside of Fourth Way circles but for me, over the last 20 years, he has been one of the most inspirational uh, members of the original group uh, with Gurdjieff in Fontainebleau. And the piece I would like to read for you is from Mount Analogue, uh, and it's about seeing things of a much, much higher realm and from a, a completely different order and re retaining the memory of what one has seen uh, and it goes like this. You cannot stay on the summit forever. You have to come down again. So why bother in the first place? Just this. What is above knows what is below. But what is below does not know what is above. One climbs, one sees, one descends, and one sees no longer. But one has seen. There is an art of conducting oneself in the lower regions by the memory of what one has saw higher up. When one can no longer see, one can at least still know. And that's from a tremendous work called Mount Analogue by René de Maul. It's probably the most famous passage from it. And here he's talking about, it ties in perfectly with uh, the work concept of verifying things. Uh, this is not a, a teaching that's related to believing in things. It's a teaching that needs to be every step of the way that we take within the fourth way is actually meant, it's meant for us to verify things. It's no good believing in anything. It needs to be verified. And by this climb to the top, to the summit of Mount Analogue, René de Maul is using this as a metaphor for having seen something of a higher nature and at one point you have to come down but not forever at one point you can ascend again and remain there forever but at one point in this mortal earthly existence we have to come down again but the whole point is retaining what we have seen what has been verified from somewhere much much higher up and I had this most incredible dream a few hours ago. Uh, I'm obviously dreaming now as I, as I make this recording, uh, because this now is more like a dream than the actual dream that I had. And I was actually with René de Maul, and we were sitting talking together, and we decided to make a little film. And it was as real as me touching my hand here, it was so incredibly real. I don't know how long it lasted. It was completely outside of time, outside of space and time, but it was super real. And we were together and we made this little film. And then afterwards we went out for dinner and then I, I actually woke up. But it was so incredibly real. I can't describe how real it was. And it made me think that there is a large aspect of the fourth way is that there is a veil which needs, to be, which needs to be lifted, which will connect us to a greater reality outside of space and time. Because we are sort of conditioned to a three-dimensional space and time, which has no relevance in the greater reality. And our being, our essential being, is completely and utterly outside of space and time. It doesn't exist in space and time. And the more that I've gone on with this journey, the more that I've realised that I've, in some 
way I've actually stepped outside of space and time. It, the days and the months and the years and so on, they have no relevance towards me at all. I'm somewhere outside of that. Uh, whether it's in that dream with them all, whether it's within the work that I do, or just what I do in my, my existence, it is somewhere outside of space and time. And if we combine that with having seen, as René de Maul says, something of a higher nature, uh, that is the absolute verification. I may have come back down, as he says, to the, the lower regions, but I've actually seen it and I know that it's real. And from my 30 years of involvement in the work, I've had at least a dozen experiences of connection to something that's much, much higher and of a different dimension, a greater reality. Uh, and, and the memories of that have, be, have become part of who I am. And therefore we go in beyond faith and beyond belief into a tangible, total, uh, verifiable reality of something higher, of a greater nature. And when you have that, it's locked within you. And no matter what happens externally, it doesn't impinge upon it because it's gone beyond that. And the whole purpose of doing this work is to connect to the higher and the greater reality, to the miraculous, basically, that which is outside of space and time, that which is, which is eternal, and to realize that what is part of that, that the veil has been lifted and that we have been conditioned by identification and by all the other aspects of our false personality into believing this is it. This three-dimensional space we are in, the certain number of years we have, this is not it. This is most definitely not it. There is something beyond uh, which is it, which is very, very real, and which daily, as we do this work, we actually connect to. And knowing that there's something higher and connecting to it activates the higher emotional center because this this heavy ponderous world of three dimensions is in a very very low region uh, and one needs to break out of that to lift the veil and go on through to the other side uh, and and the fourth way we forget a lot the fourth way is very very mystical it's a profoundly mystical teaching uh, it's not a, a scientific concrete uh, one, two, three, A, B, C, uh, teaching, it's a profoundly mystical one. And there's no, the, it's impossible to tell anyone that or to share a profound mystical experience with someone else unless they've experienced it. Therefore, you have two people who are verifying together the higher nature, the miraculous uh, coming together. But if one person has not seen it and the other one has, there's no way that the twain will ever, ever meet. So it's like an initiation process whereby you, you actually know that there is something else. And not just this span of years that we have that go very, very fleetingly, but something that is eternal, that is outside of space and time, that is immortal. And it's the most exquisitely beautiful feeling in the world. It's a release from the snares and the conditions of three-dimensional life and the belief in everything that isn't to the belief, not just the belief, sorry, but the knowing of what actually really is once the veil has been lifted. And with the people I've been involved with who have done this work, a number of, the, a number of them have experienced this and it, 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 it's, it's borderline impossible to describe in words because it's so intimately personal but what I will say it's related to expansion of consciousness when we come outside of of space and time and we experience something permanent and most importantly something beautiful and miraculous it's knowing it it's knowing it it's not talking about it with words and the movement of the mind as Gene de Salzman says it's knowing that that beyond the veil is actually real.
and that we are part of it for eternity. And this consciousness that we have obviously cannot be seen, but this is what is immortal and this is what learns. And Plato says in one of his most famous works, the Symposium, and Symposium means a gathering of writers. In that work he says, learning is nothing at all, remembering is all. So it's remembering this, this, this line of consciousness outside of space and time, which is operative uh, in every cell in our body. And the body goes and the consciousness continues and it learns and it grows and so on and so forth. And all the miraculous experiences actually stay with it. I'm going to read the quote again from René de Mol to finish this one. Uh, you cannot stay on the summit forever. You have to come down again. So why bother in the first place? Just this. What is above knows what is below. But what is below does not know what is above. One climbs, one sees, one descends, one sees no longer, but one has seen. There is a, an art of conducting oneself in the lower regions by the memory of what one has saw higher up. When one no longer sees, when one, when one can no longer see, one at least still knows. One can at least still know. So you've seen it, you've come down, and it's become, it's become part of your being, what you've actually experienced. Uh, and it's there forever. And in the first chapter of The Fourth Way by Uspensky, he says, if consciousness could be proven to exist outside of the physical body, many, many other things can be proven. But at the moment, it can't be proven. But I think it can. Uh, and he goes on later in the same chapter, chapter one of The Fourth Way, to say, until we know what, what exists after death, all our knowledge at the moment is, is, is very, very flimsy uh, and not of much worth, if, if of any worth at all. So by having connection to those higher moments, those moments of bliss and magic, uh, we actually go outside, as I say, the three-dimensional realm of space, time, life and death into an eternal realm in which everything becomes very, very beautiful. I hope that you're having a nice weekend and everything is flowing very, very smoothly. Uh, I love what I do. That's apparently self-evident. And uh, I love sharing it with people. And people are either responsive to it and they resonate with it or they don't. Uh, and there's, no one any, there's nothing anyone can actually do about that. Uh, I believe this work can't fundamentally be taught. It's something that's already the seed for it is actually in the person and it can actually develop and grow. Uh, René de Maul lived from 1908 to 1944 and he was a close friend of Alexander de Salzman who was Jean de Salzman's first husband uh, and René de Maul was very very close to Gurdjieff and to the de Salzmans and Jean de Salzman was with him holding his hand as he passed on to the other side. But he's still here with us. René de Maul is still here. Gurdjieff is still here. Jean de Salzman is still here. They're not dead. It's just most people are dead. Uh, dead to every possibility of development and expansion of consciousness. Any questions, queries, just leave a, a comment or send me an email. Uh, and a great big thank you for the people who are working with me. Uh, you're proving very, very tough nuts to crack, uh, but I'm good at cracking nuts. Uh, see you later, alligators. Lots of love. Bye. bye.